<laughs> but if you're an actor, and if you're interested in acting, uh, you must get used to having embarrassing moments because that's how you find good stuff. You must be prepared to, Look at real. Uh, to be vulnerable. So there are a lot of uh, situations yeah. that don't work that's actually has been filmed. Yeah, but they're, but they're usually your own way to find something that does work. But I mean, they show up in a blooper reel. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I'd, I'd love to see a blooper reel, but the show is so intense in terms of the amount of uh, filming that has to be done in a small amount of time. I don't think anyone's got time to cut that together. <laughs> They'll make time. Yeah. Okay, hi. <laughs> Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank you. it. Next question. Hi. Hello. Uh, so, in The Witch is Familiar, how did it feel to ride around instead of one of your worst enemies? Uh, in, in Davos' chair. Yes. Um, it was absolutely great. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I'm, I don't want to give away too many secrets, but the way that Davos' chair moves around is like, you know, do you ever go to the post office and there's like an old lady <laughs> there in the line on an electric sort of wheelchair thing, like this with her shopping stuff? That's what's inside Davos's. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'm really respectful of the old ladies because it's really hard to drive. <laughs> and when I did it at first, you know, I had to come through uh, quite a narrow little doorway, which a Dalek can get through. I couldn't. <laughs> I banged into the side. I banged into the side. And then I discovered that the crew had put a learner plate on it. <laughs> <laughs> because I couldn't run. Oh. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Hello. Um, thank you for coming to Texas. Um, I run a small fan group in San Antonio, and I'm here with about a dozen of my closest friends. And I need to thank you personally. My world would be so much poorer and so much more lonely if it weren't for you and your work. I've found so yeah. many friends as a result of it. <laughs> oh, cool. Awesome. Um, what I wanted to ask is, I know Doctor Who is your dream job, but every actor goes out for roles that, for one reason or another, they don't get. What was the one that you really, really wish you had, maybe you were their second choice for, and just didn't get it? Oh, you know, that changes from, uh, it depends upon what your financial situation is. Because <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes you might be like, I'd really like to play Hamlet. And they don't give me Hamlet more. He uh, mentioned that once, like, yeah. We don't have any money to buy food or pay the rent, so you really want to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's been lots of parts that were like, you know, the, the detective's friend. Uh, <laughs> or the, the third banana, which I'd love to have got because I needed the money at the time, but I didn't. Well, this, this permanent job, like she was saying, that you have right now is, is putting you into a level of icon status now, just being part of the franchise of Doctor Who. So I think you'll be eating well for a good while now. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hello. Welcome to Fan Expo. If you could write your own Doctor Who episode, what would it be about? Oh. Uh, I think that I would like to see, uh, uh, I'd like to see how 
the doctor and his granddaughter. Mm. Came to be, what is that situation? Is that really his granddaughter? If, that, if that's his granddaughter, is she a title? Uh, or is, there, is she adopted? Or is, uh, is it just a, a weird kind of fun? Uh, is he looking after her? There's some, but there's some intense kind of psychic or genetic link between them. So I would love to know what that was. And also, of course, he um, uh, left her and mm. promised he would come back, and he never came back. Uh, so I would like to see him come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I still ask my story to explore. Yeah, obviously, any suggestions to your writers and stuff like that? Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, so, we've had two members from the thick of it uh, guest on the show. So, I was wondering who else would you like from that show to guest on Doctor Who? Villain or perhaps the guy? Uh, you mean of any actors? Yeah, that have been on the thick of it, yes. They've been on the thick of it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyone that the, the cast of the thing that were extraordinary, yeah. they were absolutely brilliant actors. Uh, so, any one of them would do a wonderful job. So, anyway, thank you. You're welcome. We'll get more out of him later, okay? okay. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello. Oh, is uh, the doctor the hybrid? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> <laughs> no, stand by, stand by. Hold, hold, hold. Hold for me, You know I can't answer that question. <laughs> now get out. <laughs> Hi. Hello? Uh, hello. I know this is a really silly one, but if I challenged you to a lightsaber duel, would you accept? Easily. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> and you will kick your ass. <laughs> he's still challenging. Yeah, that's right, but that's because he's fictional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great, man. Love him. Hi. Hi, Peter. Hello. So, first of all, we're all really happy to be here. Great job, my partner. Great job, this is I agree. So that's why he was in Star Wars. I think George Lucas and Steven Spielberg loved the work of Hammer, or uh, Hammer Pictures, and uh, Peter Cushing was uh, one of the stars of. Uh, and of course, he played the Doctor, the big movie versions uh, of, of Doctor Who. But I remember, and it's, been, and it's, it, it's pertinent to this kind of experience here uh, of coming to a, a big sort of fan convention. He was like opening a, a, a charity event in my hometown, uh, and there was a very small queue of people, a small line, about half a dozen of us, uh, because they didn't do things like this. Uh, and he signed an autograph and gave me, gave me, you know, they didn't sell the autographs or anything, they just <laughs> gave me this 10 by 8 photograph of himself, and he signed it and signed his name. And I, I, I was so, I love this, this autograph so much, I based my own autograph on his. <laughs> <laughs> because he has the same initials. He's oh, yeah. And I'm PC also. Um, and he was absolute charm. So that was awesome. Thank you. 
uh, a little bit on your, your, your childhood. You, from what I understand, if you can verify this or not, received a script or something. At what age was that? A Doctor Who script, in fact, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I was about uh, uh, 50. It's the same? Thing. Yeah. How did that come about? What? What it was, was I was, I really was really crazy about the show and I would write uh, to Doctor Who or, or to whoever would be playing the part or I would write to the BBC uh, because we all knew the BBC's address and you could write to them and they would send you back a, a photograph of Doctor Who or whatever. But I wrote like, there was a period I went through when I was writing like every week. <laughs> Because the show would be off the air and I'd be saying, when is it coming back? What's going to happen? Well done, all blah, blah. And clearly I was really, clearly very interested in, uh, in, in the making of the show. And the producer of the show, well one day I, I came home, there was a package waiting for me. I opened oh. this package up and there were two scripts uh, from the, for the forthcoming season that hadn't been broadcast. Hey. Uh, set designs and floor plans. Uh, the, and these were technical, these were, these were BBC technical scripts that would be used on the floor with the cameraman. Uh, and I didn't even know what a thing called a script existed. I didn't know how they made TV shows. And so suddenly I saw how they made the show, uh, and I was absolutely transparent. Uh, and in a way that I thought that this was confirmation that I wanted to do this. I don't mean just be Doctor Who, I mean, but to be an actor and be in that world. And they were sent to me by a man called Barry Lance, who was the producer of Doctor Who. Uh, he was a brilliant producer. And uh, he just, I think they just did that in those days. They said if there was someone who got in touch and they thought that person was interested, they, they felt it was their duty to try and encourage them. That is freaky. <laughs> <laughs> but the most amazing thing was that many, many years later, uh, I, I, I had a friend, I had a friend called Chris Wynn, uh, who, I, who was an actor who wanted to work with, uh, and, 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 and we joined each other's company. And I'd known him for about a year before he said to me, you know my father is Barry Lance. Um, <laughs> and I finally got to meet Barry. <laughs> this is freaky. In person, and thank you, in person. And you were 15, do you still have that script? And all that information? Yes, yes. Yeah. eBay. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a testament to, to, to Barry and to the BBC, which is the most incredible organisation. It's a publicly owned, and in our terms, in British terms, that means we, the taxpayer, own it. It's our BBC. Mm. So there is a responsibility within the BBC to reach out. That's to right, to the BBC. And they gave back to the people. And they do. You're a recipient of that. Wow, the circle is complete. That's right. The circle is complete. Wow. Awesome. Hi. 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 Peter, thank you so much for coming. I'm excited that you're here. I wanted to ask if you actually had control of the TARDIS and you could pick up three <laughs> famous historical figures or people from history, who would you invite to invite the TARDIS? Oh, gosh. That sounds tough. Uh, well, you know what I think? Well, this year we go get uh, Prince. Uh, we go get Alan Rickman. Oh. We go get Ted. Yeah. And we would pass him. Thank you. Wow. That's, I'll be in the slip screen, you know, kind of thumbing as you guys roll by. Cool. Hi. 